two, three, four, we don't want your shot no more. One, two, three, four, we don't want your shot no more. One, two, three, four, we don't want your shot no more. One, two, three, four, we don't want your shot no more. We don't want your shock no more. One, two, three, four. We don't want your shock no more. Oh, no. <laughs> Here today we're uh, talking about uh, uh, banning uh, lobotomies and, and uh, electric shock therapies and electric shock, which is uh, very uh, dangerous to uh, brain injuries, a lot of uh, brain injuries, and there, there's, we, we are doing uh, several uh, letters to the governor to, to do a, uh, to change the uh, uh, law which is caused by uh, uh, AS uh, 47.30.80. Eight twenty-five, and we need to amend uh, and change uh, uh, section F and G, uh, which is electric talk and lobotomy, uh, which was passed in uh, 84, 1984. Uh, and even though I, I personally am for banning of uh, electric shock, uh, I think that we sh should uh, have have the governor have a rally for, uh, uh, not a rally, a uh, uh, conversation uh, to determine whether it's safe or not, even though I believe it's not safe. Well, I'm here at this electroshock protest because I am an electroshock survivor. I feel like I have an obligation to speak for many of the people cannot be available to express how damaged they've been by electroshock. I lost years of memory. I was um, a national award-winning songwriter. I lost years of memory of the music that I'd composed and years of memory of my children's lives. I don't think anyone would ever be willing to give up memories of their of their children's lives I, I and the fact of the matter is that no one is ever told that electroshock is brain damage no one is ever told that in the vulnerable state that they're in that part of what's happened to them is drug damage people are told they're treatment resistant there's no such thing it's drug damage and when people are presented with electroshock as being medically necessary, safe and effective, it is a lie. The fact is that thousands of people have been damaged. I know people who have been unable to recognize their husbands and their children. I know people who cannot make short-term memories. The fact is that this is true and you won't hear this in the media. You will not hear what I'm saying in the mainstream media. The mainstream media represents the industries that benefit, and they will present this as a last ditch, safe and effective measure that's been made safer. No, it hasn't. It, no matter what they tell you, it's a grand mal seizure, and a grand mal seizure to the brain is brain damage. And uh, so that's why I'm here today. We don't yet have electroshock in Alaska. However, there are people who uh, would very much like to bring it here. Uh, a couple of years ago, I saw an advanced directive from Alaska Regional Hospital where people were asked to say whether or not they would be willing to have electroshock. Um, 
and the fact of the matter is that a couple of years ago, a young man by the name of Brett Vaughn was shipped off from Alaska to be electroshocked in Seattle. And thank goodness that people were able to intervene on his behalf, and he was he was saved. And today, Brett Vaughn is is, is recovered and doing well. Um, so it, this is a threat to Alaskans. Alaskans have every reason to be concerned about this. But beyond the concern for Alaskans, this is happening to people all over the world. In Australia, legislation has been passed allowing wards of the state who were 16 years old and under to be electroshocked. This is happening all over the world. And so we need to stop this. We need a ban on electroshock. It's brain damage, and it's always brain damage. So thank you very much for having me here at this protest, and we want to honor the people who are protesting all over the world today, and, uh, and that's, that's my two cents. Electroshock was started around 1938. It's running a lot of electricity through a person's brain to cause a, a grand mal seizure. People could, uh, get in a coma. It's really a closed head injury. It causes memory loss, lots of times permanently. Now they say that the new electroshock is better, but it's not. What they do is they've, uh, they've started giving people anesthesia to knock them out so they can't shake and break their, break their bones just from the convulsions. In 1976, uh, Congress passed this act to require medical devices to be uh, approved by the FDA, but the electroshock machines were grandfathered in. Uh, in 1990 something, Congress passed a law directing uh, the FDA to uh, look at uh, the electroshock machines to see if they should be allowed or if they should be uh, classified out of the most dangerous. In 2011, uh, a panel of the FDA recommended that the electroshock machines remain in the most dangerous category and that uh, there should be studies. But what they didn't go, they never went through was what's called pre-marketing uh, approval, where they submit studies about the safety and efficacy, and that's never been done. And the panel recommended that these uh, shock machines not be approved uh, or not be changed from the classification and that the FDA require that they be, uh, the studies be done. The FDA has, uh, except for catatonia, and the FDA has sat on that since then, uh, just allowing hundreds of thousands of people to be shocked. This is something that has to stop. It's a crime against humanity, um, and we're here in Anchorage to support the worldwide protests against electroshock. Um, it's just barbaric. Uh, and should be banned worldwide. How do you My grand grandfather was probably electroshocked and had a lobotomy, force committed. And I want to say that it's a multi-generational problem. I grew up being frightened to speak about it or ever go for help. I grew up thinking, uh, being told that uh, doctors killed my father's father and we were n never allowed to go to any doctor because of his fear and his mistrust and also it caused because he did not do anything wrong to hurt anybody or himself he only cried a lot because he had lost so much of, of his life and so we were all taught I have five brothers that were taught never to cry and that is a very sad thing when, when anything like lobotomy or drugs or electroshock is, uh, causes someone to not feel those strong emotions, because those emotions are good. They teach us and we learn from them. And thoughts and memories like Nancy's talking about, you lose your soul, you lose yourself if you don't have your memories and be able to uh, think cognitively. So. Right now, we don't think that uh, there's shock is happening in Alaska. We don't think we've had the, um, uh, the, the machines that do that. 
and we don't think lobotomy is going on. It's still a problem everywhere, and it's still we think uh, Alaskans are being sent down, especially to corrections. Uh, we have people, children, and other residents sent to Seattle. And I heard Jim talking about uh, Brett Vaughn. I thought his mom was going to be here. She was put in jail just for trying to help her son. Many kids are being taken away from their families, and elders are taken away from their families because they're refusing to comply with what the medical professionals say. They know better than us. And because of the Parents Patria Doctrine, which Gerald's going to talk about, uh, anybody with a disability is treated like a child. And this has made worse by the Americans with Disability Act. They, they made that in Congress. It never was like that. So in some ways, we think people, especially if you have a label, a psychiatric label, you're worse off since the Americans with Disability Act than you were before. Same thing happened with the pre-existing condition exclusion clause that uh, court suits were going on and calling that discrimination. But because of the Americans with Disability Act, that ended that debate and that's why now we're having this Medicaid expansion because uh, because the Americans with Disability ended that concrete and now we're getting it piece by piece. So. We really need to have that kind of reform as part of uh, the Medicaid expansion. Daryl's written a letter to the governor, and it will be presented on Monday. And we want everybody to join us to talk about that letter so we can look at uh, the kind of uh, proposed legislation that we have going to Alaska. We think it's going to really be good because uh, we've always thought the right to refuse care was the most important part. And so we've asked the governor to absolutely let everybody, including those labeled incapacitated, to have the right to refuse care. But we agree with Jim that banning is, uh, and we've also asked for that too, total ban because those, the electroshock lobotomies have not been tested by the FDA, as Nancy, I heard her say, and uh, they are unsafe. And no, the only reason that we think that some people think they're ineffective is because it, it, it cuts off your emotions. You, you forget things in the past and they don't matter to you anymore. So that's not okay. Thank you very much, Nancy. Hi, my name is Chris Page and I'm here in Alaska because I was, I was completely victimized by psychiatry and I'm recovering from a brain injury caused by psychiatric drugs. But I feel like ECT falls under the same heading, which is a brain injury given to a patient uh, under the guise of medicine, under the guise of treatment causing permanent brain damage for a lot of people, inability to recall events, basically losing who they are as a person, their history. And I find that criminal and cruel, and we need to do everything we can to ban this treatment wherever it's being done. Thanks. My name is Faith Myers, and I'm here because this is the nationwide and international and Alaskan protest against electroshock and lobotomies and uh, electric shock always causes brain damage. And I'm here with uh, uh, other Alaskans and we are protesting. We want electric shock to stop. Um, electric shock is not a problem in Alaska, but people in Alaska are shipped to state of Washington to have electroshock and uh, we want to stop it all over the nation and internationally. Uh, my name is Gregory Nelson. I'm uh, one of Bonnie's son, Daryl's little brother, which you met earlier on the video. Um, I'm here, of course, in protest of forced electroshock. Uh, is electroshock harmful in 100% of the cases? It does damage to the brain. It does damage to the brain. Look, I am highly opposed to forced implementation of any medical procedure, especially a dangerous one. A lot of care and thought needs to go into electroshock because you are doing damage to the brain. It is not something that should be just done blasé, and it's not something that you should take away a person's right in order to be able to refuse that medication, medical treatment, if they so choose to. That's why I'm here today. One, one two, two, three, four, we don't want your shock no more. One, two, three, four, we don't want your shock no more. One, 
two, three, four. We don't want your shot no more.